Hi, my name is Anne Russell. I'm the uh, birth mum of two children with FASD and the founder of the Russell Family Fetal Alcohol Disorders Association. This presentation uh, is one of several. Uh, it started out at being 11, but I think it's going to grow. Um, and this particular presentation is on FASD, Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder and Mental Health. Um, fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder is described in the overview of the condition. So I'll just run straight through to, um, to FASD and mental health. Mental health is one of the secondary disabilities of uh, being prenatally affected by alcohol and it results from not having the condition identified and appropriate strategies and interventions put into place for the individual. Now when the affected individual looks normal um, and on the surface behaves in a normal way, has very good verbal ability, um, then the expectations of other people are such that um, they can't uh, achieve. And they can't achieve it because they have an organic brain injury. And when you are constantly experiencing what um, they experience as failures, um, when they can never or rarely do what's expected of them because they have this brain injury, and because of the expectations of others, they often develop, in fact, more often than often, um, it's almost 100% of people with this condition will develop a mental health issue. So the mental health issue can be anything from a personality disorder to depression and anxiety, um, but 100% or almost 100% of people will have a mental health problem. It's um, it, it, FASD isn't something that you can actually medicate, um, but you can medicate for the symptoms. So currently uh, my son is on an antipsychotic because of paranoia and that, and that works very well for him. Uh, he's also on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication which also works very well for him. So it's, it's not a matter of medicating the organic brain injury, it's more a matter of medicating the actual mental health symptoms. Um, one thing that I'd like to, to, to mention is if you have a look at the antisocial personality disorder in the DSM-4, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, um, you've, I've read it and, I, and it's almost exactly FASD um, and I often wonder whether or not that condition has been written up specifically for people with FASD. But anyway, I digress. Um, so uh, if you know somebody who has FASD, they will have a mental health condition. Um, and if you can medicate them and it, and it is effective, that will really be of, of help. The problem with medication though, as I've mentioned in one of my other presentations, is that you must make sure that that individual takes that medication. And it's not always just a matter of, hey, um, Joe, don't forget to take your medication. You will have to actually give him the medication or her, watch while he or she takes it, and uh, actually make sure that it's, it's taken. And also you have problems, I mean, if, if they're teenagers or adults, you would expect them to be able to take medication, but in this instance, it's not, that, it's not the case. Um, and also if the uh, script runs out, uh, somebody has to be there to go and get a repeat, um, fill, the, fill the repeat script, because it's very, very unlikely that that individual will be able to do that. So it's, uh, once medication is involved, it's an ongoing support role or somebody must play an ongoing support role. Uh, also, um, if one is prescribing medication, then be careful because apparently with people with FASD, you often find that they react in a different way to what the, the medication is supposed to do. For instance, if it's a sedative, it may um, make them hyperactive or vice versa. So it's, uh, um, mental health is, a, is, is uh, something to really watch out for. Um, I think that if you are able to get the child diagnosed before age six 
or certainly early intervention and you can put appropriate strategies into place and everybody understands the condition and everybody understands the limitations, um, then perhaps that mental health condition can be avoided. But in Australia at the moment, we just don't have that level of support. Um, so uh, if you need any more information or help, please go to our website, um, the Russell Family Fetal Alcohol Disorders Association, or you can email me at um, elizabeth at rffada.org, uh, F for Fred, or you can contact us by ringing 1800 RFF ADA. Also, if you'd like to um, um, have some professional training, uh, Training Connections Australia, which is a national training organisation, um, delivers professional training at quite a reasonable price. Uh, you can contact them through the RFF ADA website as well. Thank you very much.